he, what she told me is very sad. She told me you can this time I'm leaving you for good and you you are going to die. You can stay with your poor stupid family. The tears just flowed. Mm. And I was like, is this the lady I got married to? That's where my problem now started. Hello, welcome to Tuko Talks. My name is Lynn Goge. Now, I want you to put yourself in this situation. You are happily married with two beautiful children. And then one day you wake up and realize your wife has taken all your children abroad and she might as well be settling with another man. That's the story of my guest today. So without much further ado, allow me to let him introduce himself. Hello. Hello. How are you? Fine, thanks. Please introduce yourself. Yeah. <coughs> my name is Robert Ochi. Mm -hmm. um, I'm a Kenyan. Yes. Uh, born in Nairobi, but uh, from Sierra. I was married yeah. in 1993, okay. December 2nd, to a lady called Maureen Sanya. Now Sanya. How was your love life like? Uh, my love life was great. I was in love with that lady. Uh, I met her at Impala Club in 1993 april mm -hmm. and the love pushed her to get married after six months in december wow where we <coughs> we had a church wedding in our lady of guadalupe yeah and god blessed her with a, a girl baby girl in 1994 yeah uh september 15th and then we named her terry Teresa Ochien mm -hmm. in the year 2000 God bless her again with a baby boy, mm -hmm. who I named after my best friend, Ronnie Kabaka Mutebi. And my married life was uh, great until uh, the uh, eight, 1987. Mm -hmm. can remember what that the time Prince Diana passed on. Yes. Uh, my mother, uh, that's where we started our problem. Mm -hmm. uh, my mother-in-law came in to take our daughter away from me now her mom her mom mm -hmm. why do you think the mother-in-law didn't like you yeah the mother-in-law started during our wedding during when i went to pay dowry she was demanding a lot because she believed i had money i was working at breban and we were well paid which she got it wrong because at breban we have there were two three or four different salaries mm. there's expert local and name it mm -hmm. <clears throat> my church wedding was late for three hours. Mm. She was forcing, demanding the money, uh, the dowry. Then my the, my ex-wife, uh, 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 grandmother is the one who said, now this girl have to go to, and get married. Later on, she started pushing now, coming to my house very early in the morning. Then telling the daughter evil things about me. She got married to a poor family. Look at the sister, the sister is doing so well, married to Mzungu, but you are struggling. The, your sisters in law are living with you. She didn't want that. Oh, so the mom wanted her to marry a Mzungu or someone who is well off. Well off. Okay. So I think the girl, the lady married me because of love. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because my, our marriage was very fast. It was four months. And actually, the, 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 my wife told my ex-wife, let me not call her my wife, my ex-wife told mm -hmm. me that uh, the mom is bad. And I told, and she told me what the mom did to the mm -hmm. late dad, mm -hmm. which I'm not going to open. Okay, it's okay. Yeah, so it was, uh, she told me everything. Mm -hmm. And I asked her, are you going to do what your mom did to your dad? She told me, not me, maybe my sister, because my sisters are darling. So my wife just started straight from the word go. My wife, was, ex-wife, was working at, with Barclays Bank, uh, the plaza, I used to, and we were staying in uh, in, uh, in Maradaima. Mm -hmm. In the morning, we had a row. We had a row that night. Then I realized things are not working. Things she she isn't up to something. So I dropped her at uh, the plaza. I went to work. But something told me just go back to the house. I went back to the house. I found her in the house and asked her, what, what are you doing in the house and you're supposed to be working? She told me she wasn't feeling well. So that 
she her plan didn't work so after the following day i dropped again and uh, I, before going to dropping her i told the askari i don't want anybody to move with my stuff i was seeing something cheeky going to happen mm -hmm. so i left dropped her went to work to come back in the evening i was staying with my we were living together with my sisters mm -hmm. my twin sisters mm -hmm. I got uh, home at around uh, seven. I found my sisters out, outside, and I was like, "What are you guys doing outside? The, uh, my material is not in. The door is locked. I gave her the key. Gave my sister the keys. I was talking to the Ascari. The Ascari told me they came with a lorry to sweep the house, but we had to stop them. Mm -hmm. And the mother was very, very cuddly, mm -hmm. so they had to call the cops." The cops forced them back and told them, you take what belongs to the kid and the mother, but this nini, leave them. Leave them. Mm -hmm. So they went and stuffed everything in the, <coughs> the, the second bedroom. Now, when I was giving my sisters the keys, I, I was with the Ascari at the gate. The next thing, I just had my sister coming, running, that the house is burning. So they switch. When they switch on the light, I don't know what happened. Mm -hmm. Second bedroom mm -hmm. was burning. Mm -hmm. So there was a, my gas was full. So the gas was there. I think they wanted the house to blow. Mm -hmm. So it was like uh, God will. Nothing happened. The house, uh, no, the house got burned. So. But no one was no hurt. No one was hurt. Mm -hmm. We called the fire brigade. They managed to put off the fire. The following morning. I went, I called her, she picked the phone, told her what did you do in the house? She said the, the house was, uh, she did nothing to the house. Kumbe, there's a wire they connected mm. next to the gas, put clothes. When you switch off the light, it just... Close. Yeah, so my dad and my uncle, they took off to, the, to talk to the mom. After four months, she came back. She came back after four, four months. months. Yeah. Okay. So this time she has packed her stuff, she has left, and then she comes back to you. Yeah. You guys, you pick it up. Yeah, and she apologized. Mm -hmm. So we pick it up, and she said she, she had learned a mistake. She doesn't want anybody to mess up with her, whatever. She's now here to stay. Okay. How did it come to a point now you realized this woman has taken my kids away from me? Now, after that, the, we moved to Embakasi. Now we are staying next door to the mother. Mm -hmm. My wife did, my ex wife didn't have a job, so we are struggling. At that point, the, the mom was now pushing. She was, it was a throwaway stone to my house. She used to come six in the morning. Kumbe, there was a plan for her to move. It was during the holiday, July 2002. I came back at, at around uh, 10. Whatever I found, I, when I was getting into my, our court, I found a letter from the Ascari. And the letter was like, your wife have taken, she was asking permission from N NSSF, the guys who owned the, that, those, those houses, to move out with her belonging. I went home, I went to, I had, they gave me the keys, I opened the door, I found everything gone. The worst thing, my clothes was, she poured water in, on my clothes and uh, where the, she left me a mattress, it was full of water. And I was like, what is this? And uh, I just developed whatever I got sick. I went to Nairobi Hospital and uh, I was admitted mm -hmm. and I got high blood pressure. So you were shocked yeah, from the word go. Depression. Depression. Where you, I was, when I got there, I was like, I'm trying to sleep. When she left, I can't sleep. And I was going to the toilet after everyone, 30 minutes. So let, let me ask Robert, yeah. you walk inside your house, yeah. you realize there is nothing. Yeah. just a mattress yeah. full of water yeah. what's the first thing you do did you not so call her i tried calling her she mm. was muteja that was around 11 11 going to midnight yes she was muteja so after that i called her again i called her in the morning she didn't pick the phone okay. i nearly lost my job because i was thinking a lot and it was like depression so treated she she then when I got better, I think I called her and she picked the phone. She, what she told me is very sad. She told me, you can, this time I'm leaving you for good and you, you are going to die. You can stay with your poor, stupid family. 
the tears just flowed. Hmm. And I was like, is this the lady I got married to? That's where my problem now started. Now, January, the kids started school. My daughter was at Breastside. She was uh, in year four. Mm -hmm. And the boy was in uh, nursery school at the course, mm -hmm. same court in Mbakasi. Mm -hmm. So I was like, um, after, I think it was December 20 or 23rd, Breastside called, called me because their sister school to Breban. And the teacher, the class teacher was a friend of, a colleague and a friend. Mm -hmm. And she asked me, where is the Terry I've been school for close to two weeks? Because when Terry was not in uh, with me, I wasn't whatever. I wasn't allowed to talk to them. So I called my, my ex-wife in Teja. I called the, the, I wanted to call the mom, but I wasn't in good time with the mom. Yes. So I let go. I called the brother. The brother told me, my, uh, Maureen got a job in South Africa and she had gone with the kids. Hmm. I was like, Sawa, I, I was, in fact, I was shocked. She had taken off with the kids. So I went to the embassy. I tried calling the embassy. The embassy told me there's no one like uh, Maureen Sanya and there's no, no one who left with the kids. Yes. I tried going to immigration, but that time immigration was full of corruption. Mm. So I don't know how this lady got the, uh, my concert yes. over getting this kid's pa passport. I don't know how. It took time. My brother managed, was following them on Facebook, talking to my ex. I don't know how. Then uh, my ex sent my brother some photos, which I have. And after then, we just went quiet again. And uh, four years ago, we got to know she was in Canada. So now she's in Canada. She's in Canada. Oh, yes. And she's um, married with some, to a gentleman called si Simons, and I've changed those kids' name to Simon. She changed your kids' name yeah. to, wow. So like my daughter, we used to call her Ter Terry, short to Teresa. Yes. Now Terry's gone. She's called uh, Ter uh, T Teresa Simons. And my, my son was called Ronnie. She now is now Ronnie Simons. So they were cheering. He's gone. He's gone. And now they are Simons. They are Simons. Wow. Mm. Upon seeing your kids, you know, kids' photos for the first time after a long time with different names. What was going through your mind? Uh, I was like, uh, it really hurt me, but I had no choice because I've tried to look for whatever. And I, I said, Mwenyangubu, Mpishe. So I tried my level best and I was like, even if Canada, Canada is a different whatever, and I don't know which state they are in. Mm -hmm. So it was like, God, I leave it to God. Okay. And, mm -hmm. yeah. Did you try seeking answers from her family in law? Like, wh where is my wife in Canada and why are my kids using different names? They blocked me. Everyone blocked yeah, from you. From my family, they blocked me. It was only my, my younger brother who was uh, making an effort to fight for those kids to look for them. Did you ever get any answers on how their names changed? Yeah, I came to get uh, the answer from my brother, I think five years ago, four, four years ago, when my brother managed to actually talk to Terry on uh, email. My brother was like, talk to your dad. He's still your dad. Oh, it's long. It has been long. How do I start? I think the mom, or the mom told those kids, with God knows. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So according to you, you think she might have turned to your own children against you? Yeah, I think to me, I have a very, a, a big feeling that she either told the kids that I'm uh, dead or I was a bad daddy. I used to do this to her. You know, she created a very poisoning. Uh, ideas on those kids' uh, mm -hmm. heads. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because a kid cannot just wake up. Because Terry knew me and the girl used to love me a lot. And my, my son, Ronnie, was a very, very whatever. When I used to drop her after those, uh, after seeing her for two weeks, the boy used to cry and mm -hmm. scream. She never used to want to go but back to the grandmother. So I don't know what th that lady did to the kids. The, what she told those kids, God knows, but I would like to know mm. what did she tell the kids? Mm. Because the kids have just turned against me. They left when they know they had a dad. 
and those are my blood kids. I have everything of them. I have their birth certificate. I have their picture when they were small. Mm -hmm. So I would love an answer from her what to tell them what I did to her. Mm -hmm. Do you think maybe you did not get to know her better in the courtship period? I think I was in a rush. Our marriage was in short, whatever, but I won't call it a rush. I will call it love. But you loved her. I loved her and she loved me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But uh, she, the problem she had, she was, she had a near, a, a ear to listen to outsiders. Those are the guys who messed her, mm -hmm. her marriage. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because uh, to to me, she had a very good heart, and that's why when uh, she came back, if I was a bad man, she came back she to came, Kenya. She came back when the mom passed on. Okay. And uh, all my friends, my relatives, my brothers, my sister were like, "Here we go now. She's coming to bury your mom. Arrest her." What I don't did like, you do? What I did, I was like, first I was very like, the chances here. I have to get my kids back. Finally. Uh, yeah, mm -hmm. she's coming back and she's coming with the kids. She was clever enough. She never came back with the kids. She left the kids in Canada. She came and uh, I went to talk to a lawyer friend who told me, you have to play this right. This lady is very clever. She have come here and you don't know what she have told the kids in Canada. Maybe you have come here. Your dad, as I told you, is a bad man. When I get to Kenya, she is going to do the ABCD. Mm -hmm. So my friend, lawyer friend told me, let that lady go. But I've tried, I've tried my level best where now God, God, God is great. Mm -hmm. uh, I went somewhere to shoot a, 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 a show, a mm -hmm. whatever show, and I found my, my, my daughter's cousin. He was a manager there. Mm -hmm. Then we talked, we talked, and he was like, how are you? I said, I'm okay. Then the guy told me, ah, Terry, they are fine. Ron is fine. And Terry got married. So I was wow. like, what? To who? To a white man. So he's like, uncle, don't worry. The kids are fine. Ron is okay. He's in the university. So the boy went and showed me Terry's wedding photo, gave me all whatever. And to me, I found my heart was like relieved. Yeah, the kids are okay. They are okay. Mm -hmm. Terry have moved on. Mm -hmm. Terry has a daughter with uh, four, uh, one year. Yes. And uh, my worry was uh, my. It came to me that uh, something just came to me, heartening that uh, how did my daughter get married without my? I know. You know, yeah. I'm the one who was supposed to hold to Terry. Walk her you know, down. To, yeah. Yes. And I was like Terry got married without even thinking of the dad. So I was like, it's okay. The, the boy forwarded the, the photos on my WhatsApp. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I've uh, forgiven her. I've forgiven Terry herself for going ahead to get married without uh, my consent. Because Terry now is a grown up. I know she's a Canadian citizen, mm -hmm. but she has, she's a grown up. She has to know her right where if I'm to get married, I have to look for my own father, but I don't know what the mom did. Mm -hmm. I don't know if the mom sold Terry yeah. at an early age. At, I think she got married at 21 years old. I know you've not spoken to your kids yet. Mm. You've not had a one-on-one -on -one conversation mm. with them. But if they are watching, what do you want them to know about their dad? Their dad is, uh, is still alive. Their dad still loves them, but miss them long because it have been 17 good years. I haven't heard from them. I haven't, I've seen them on photos, but I haven't. I would like them to know that I'm looking for them. I would like to just come and they come and know that they have a dad. Even if they have a, have a dad who is in Canada, that's not their blood dad. Their blood dad is still around in Kenya. And he still loves them. And still loves them <laughs> and cares for them. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. I went to church and we are told forgiveness is a key word. I've forgiven Maureen what she did to me. I have no bad heart, whatever. Even if she comes today, mm -hmm. I'll greet her and say thank you for what you did to me. Mm -hmm. I have no bad feeling against you. Yeah. And just all those people who missed 
guided you. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And I know it's so brave of you to come and talk about such an issue, especially for a man, you know, it's so hard for men to talk about these things. What would you like to tell other men who are going through what you're going through and they find it hard to speak about? We have to open up. It is hard. And uh, men are really scared of coming out and uh, talking about their problem, which is really killing them. That's why you do see a lot of people messing up kid their own loved ones, killing the kids, killing their wife. Because it is like my situation, my case is so hurting and I could have even taken my own life. But I decided, let me just be strong for those kids. I'll fight until one day God will open my way and they'll come to know that this man called Robert Chiang was there. Is their dad? And, and he's a good man. Good man. And whatever Maureen, their mother, I respect her. If I wronged her, what I want to uh, do, whatever, is to forgive me because I've forgiven her. Okay. If I did something she didn't like, I just pray to God to soften her heart and she forgives me because my heart, deep in my heart, I've forgiven her. You are forgiven. I have no grudge with her and uh, mm -hmm. I wish her well, mm -hmm. but what I would like her to do for me is just to let those kids know that I'm their blood father and I love them. And you love them. And I know and my heart breaks for you, but mm -hmm. I am so, you know, I'm so happy for the fact that you have found, you know, the courage to talk about this. And I hope like wherever your children are, they are watching. And I can only hope you guys go get reconnected. Thank you so much, Robert, for sharing your story. Thank you guys for watching. And always remember, you can share your story with us. My name is Lynn Kogi. Bye-bye. What is wrong, honey? I got scammed at the market. This wouldn't have happened if you used Gigi. Ooh. Gigi is a huge online marketplace where you can buy and sell goods such as cars, smartphones, or even houses. Gigi is absolutely free. Gigi! Wow!